Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here, and yes, this is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds on the PC, and I'm playing it with my colleague Tom Morgan. Hey there. How's it all going? Well, much better now we're playing the PC version of this. I mean, <laughs> we've uh, spent uh, you know a couple of videos analysing PUBG on Xbox One X and Xbox One, and that's pretty much been our first impressions. And from this, well, it's a world away. I mean, we've had maybe six, seven games of this, which we've kind of condensed for this video. More on that later. But yeah, it is all about the frame rate with this one. And to show that off, we've thrown in two GPUs about the same bracket here. Yeah, so let's talk about the specs that we've got here. Core i5-8400, 6 Coffee Lake CPU cores, no hyper-threading, pretty much locks to 3.8 gigahertz. So yeah, this processor is an excellent combination of price versus performance at the moment. And we've paired it with uh, the kind of mainstream enthusiast favourites. GTX 1060, RX 580. Now I was looking at the Nvidia notes for this the other day, they were recommending the 1060 for 60 frames per second gameplay at the high setting. Now, we actually did a bit better than this. We tinkered with it and found that you can actually push it to ultra 1080p, but with one caveat, and that's the typical one being the shadow setting, which we dropped to high. Anything on the ultra setting there and you're definitely broaching sub 60 FPS territory which isn't really what you want. So obviously we've left this to go uncapped and we're running everything at ultra barring shadows at high. And yeah, pretty much everything here you're gonna see is gonna be above 60 FPS. Yeah, there will be some occasional dips below 60 frames per second, but it's very much the exception and not the rule. So yeah. <laughs> I'm on the RX 580 side here, but yeah, literally dropped into the game, didn't bother configuring the character. So yeah, I'm prancing about almost naked. And that's very indicative of the fact that this is our very first time playing the PC version threw ourselves in here, didn't really know what to expect, obviously spent most of the time using a controller up till this point, so adapting to keyboard and mouse wasn't too bad, and of course the uh, change in input latency, how snappy this PC version feels, it's an incredible upgrade over the Xbox One version, that's for sure. Yeah, I think definitely if you want to play PUBG, this is currently the way to do it. The fact that we can basically max out the game almost and still get above 60 frames per second on mainstream BC GPUs. I'd say the chances are that you can comfortably move to much less capable kit and still get 60 frames per second, which is pretty awesome. With uh, PUBG being released on PC first, there was all this hype about the game. When, when we got to it on Xbox One, we were wondering, well, what's all the fuss about? Well, this is it. This is why. It is a much, much more fun game to play. We didn't really get too lucky with the encounters in this one. A lot of sort of traipsing around trying to find people, but yes, definitely, I can see why this game uh, matters to so many people right now. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing this one, but you know, we had good fun on the Xbox One. I think the bottom line is that the technical limitations there are just so profound at the moment that they do have a fundamental impact on the gameplay. So, you know, I think the bottom line is on the PC version, I actually felt that I could point at somebody and shoot and have a decent chance of my bullets actually hitting them. But with the kind of input lag issues that the Xbox One version has at the moment, well, you know, it's kind of not optimal to say the least. Putting that aside, I guess we should look at the NVIDIA and AMD contention here. Overall, the average seems to favour AMD. I will say, looking at the stats across the board, in this clip we got the RX 580 at 77 FPS compared to 72 FPS on the GTX 1060. Okay, but we've also got the lowest 1% measurements, the 99th percentile, and the situation there is somewhat different. Yeah, while it turns out the RX 580 does have an average frame rate lead over all these tests, by in the region of 4 to 5 FPS, it does carry the average lowest FPS when it hits low points. So we're talking 49 FPS on the Nvidia card compared to 48 FPS on the AMD card. So not a huge range, but certainly across the breadth of a game, and given how many frames we're analysing here, that's very indicative. I think the experience is kind of broadly equivalent here. We've actually moved back to the original map, and we're actually seeing some interesting variations here in terms of the two GPUs with uh, Nvidia suddenly opening up a huge lead, and more consistent frame times by the look of it, versus AMD, but that all quickly sort of vanishes once you land down on the ground. It wasn't what we saw on the desert map, if you remember the intro to this 
previous video we had this same sequence, maybe because it's less complex, you know, there's less uh, forestry, fewer sort of dense cities as well, but you know, that's a, a supposition really. It does even out, as you say, and overall the lead goes to AMD once you get your feet to the ground. One thing that is interesting, looking at the frame times here, as we parachute down to the ground, both of the PCs that we're testing here do have frame time spikes, and I do think this is a CPU issue. Now this is quite interesting from my perspective because you know we're dealing with six Coffee Lake cores, 3.8 gigahertz locked, and yeah, CPU utilization is pretty high here. So you know, look, going back to the reviews for the i5 8400, there's plenty of comments about how this CPU could last you for years, but there are already scenarios here in a game that isn't known for its optimization where it seems to be hitting its limits. Shall we talk about the test methodology we're using here? Yeah, okay, so what we've done here is to essentially build two identical PCs, same processor, same RAM, same frequency on the RAM, same latency, obviously the same processor. The only difference is that we have the RX 580 versus the GTX 1060. Now, interesting question here, the game does have replay functionality, so in theory we could actually just replay all of our gameplay first on one GPU and then on the second on the exact same system. So why didn't we do that, Tom? I gave it a quick test and found it was pretty much a no-go. The gist of it is, and I'm going to show a clip here, this is the GTX 1060 running at ultra settings. On the left is actual gameplay, on the right is the replay as captured by the same tools, and you can pretty much see why we're not going to use this. The replay feed is just not indicative of what you get in gameplay by a matter of 5 to 10 FPS. So, you know, we did consider it. We thought maybe it'd be a good way to compare GPUs in kind of like a uh, like for like benchmark. But as far as gameplay is concerned, that isn't the reading you're going to get from either the GTX 1060 or RX 580. So, in the end, we went for the method we use on Xbox One X and Xbox One to compare those two, just buddy up in co op and kind of follow a similar route and stay quite close together, get a similar viewpoint on the world, and, you know, the results are going to be close enough that you can make a fair judgement. Yeah, I find this fascinating, and I'll tell you why. I mean, when we compared PlayStation 4 Street Fighter V in-game versus replay, the replay was smoother because the netcode wasn't actually in effect, and that was actually sucking up quite a lot of CPU cycles. So, in that respect, the replay was actually smoother, and obviously PUBG has got a pretty big CPU load from the netcode, there. However, when we actually compared gameplay and replay, well, you know, you can see the results for yourself. The replay is actually slower. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but the bottom line is that you can't use the replays to ascertain actual in-game performance. Maybe as a kind of like-for-like -like comparison of equal GPU loads, yes, but as an actual sort of test case for real gameplay, then no. But overall, testing it this way, these two cards come out very nicely, I think. This uh, level of setting is very acceptable. The visuals aren't gonna knock your socks off. There's a lot of pop in, even at the ultra setting. Textures aren't always great. But overall, this is the best experience you're gonna get from the game, barring the shadows. For a 1080p experience at 60 frames per second, these two cards do the job. Okay, so let's return to some gameplay here. Now, it's fair to say that we managed the remarkable feat here, which was that we played this game for, what, two hours? And we actually had massive problems finding other players. It was an ordeal, just finding players, and then when you finally get to that moment, you're just gonna mess it up inevitably, aren't you? But it, we had our best results with a vehicle in tow and uh, just running someone over, so... Yeah, so in this game, we actually separated. You had trouble actually ejecting from the ship. You were actually on a different location to the map. You grabbed a vehicle, you came to get me. I was in the middle of a firefight and you just ran the guy over. It's not exactly a scientific test, but we threw it in here just for the fun of it. One thing I actually found about the Xbox One version is that we do actually seem to be a bit more competitive at it, and I think it is actually because the controls, the latency are so bad that it affects everyone, so poor players of this game, newbies like us, actually stand a chance in it, whereas in this, whoa, these guys are like on a different level really, and the actual accuracy you get from the controls, mouse and keyboard versus joypad, it's just on a completely different level really. One thing I'm noticing, Tom, is that by and large, gameplay is pretty smooth. Now, this is sort of indicated by the frame time meter on the left there. What you want is essentially a kind of straight line. And as we're actually driving through the town here, 
we're getting quite a lot of stutter. I think it's streaming related and I think similar to the Xbox One version of the game, traveling through the environments at speed really stresses the streaming systems, causes these frame time stutters. So yeah, I suspect this is CPU related, not GPU. And even though we've got a really capable CPU in here, it's still not quite enough to get the job done. Based on an overview of the whole capture, it seems to affect AMD more. You get more of those stutters down and it makes you wonder if it would cap to 60 FPS without a hiccup or stutter, supposing you weren't able to see above that line. But yeah, it definitely affects driving sections more than on foot and that makes sense given it's a lot more streaming, a lot more terrain coming in at once and a lot more draw calls to uh, contend with. Yeah, I honestly think it's more a case of bringing in the environments, compressing them and then rendering them that that's the issue here at speed because, you know, get out of the car just like the Xbox One version, simple traversal, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so that's an initial look at PUBG on PC. Uh, obviously a lot more testing to do, uh, especially across the gamut of graphics cards we usually cover. So if you did like this video and want to see more, give us a like and subscribe and we'll be back with a comparison between the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 and much more if you want to see it. So do let us know in the comments what you'd like to see. But in the meantime, thanks Rich. No problem whatsoever. And until next time, thanks for watching.